Iodine was among the first of the elements discovered during the wars of Napoleon. Now, it's interesting is, is that we discovered how to can food. It took us another 100 years before the can opener was invented. <laughs> the use of iodine for treatment of goiter was the first time that a single item, iodine, was used to treat a specific illness, goiter. In today's world, many doctors think that iodine is a cause of goiter. We discovered iodine to treat goiter, not to induce goiter. Now, you'll notice the different types of halogens. You have fluoride, uh, chlorine. Look at the dates that they were discovered. Look at bromide, uh, discovered back in 1826. Iodine in 19, uh, 1811. Astatine uh, back in a, at, in 1940, and this was because of the nuclear uh, age uh, that they discovered this one. This is a radioactive halogen. Now, iodine deficiency causes goiter. Now, there's two types of goiter. There is goiter where the thyroid hypertrophies. Goiter is where the TSH stimulates the uh, thyroid cells to get bigger. That's a TSH-driven system. Whereas in goiter secondary to iodine deficiency, there is hyperplasia. This explains why people with goiter have a higher incidence of what? Certain types of cancer, okay? Now, iodine deficiency worldwide is the number one reason for mental retardation. And if you have iodine deficiency, it can cause problems, and it's throughout the childhood years, you can get what's called cretinism, and you notice that short, short tissues, uh, pro mental retardation, there's problem, these people have IQs in their 50s, and we see a lot of these people in Bolivia up in the Andes Mountains right now where the Bolivian government is not putting any iodine in their salt. And because of this, then you see this type of thing. Uh, missionaries that come back from Bolivia tell me about quote, the little people. And these are small people this big. They're usually about four foot tall with IQs of about 55. Now, people with goiter have a higher incidence of thyroid cancer, breast cancer, stomach cancer, esophageal cancer, ovarian cancer, and endometrial cancer. In the 1990s, Goiter was prevalent in large numbers in the Great Lakes region. 40% of school-aged children had goiter by 1924. In Akron, Ohio, 56% of the population had a goiter, with a ratio of six women to one man. The United States quickly added iodine to the salt after these studies were done. Why is there more women with thyroid disease and goiter than there is males? What's the reason? It's estrogen. Estrogen inhibits the absorption of iodine. Okay? Which explains what's the ratio of hypothyroidism in women as compared to men. It's nine women to every one male in the United States. And that's because of the estrogens women are, uh, have. <clears throat> that are inhibiting them <coughs> from absorb, absorbing the iodine. Every cell in the body contains and utilizes iodine. White blood cells cannot effectively guard against infection without adequate amounts of iodine. It's concentrated in the glandular systems of the body. Contains the, the thyroid contains the uh, largest amount of iodine. What's the number two tissue for making thyroid hormone in the body outside the thyroid? Huh? Nope. What tissue has the ability to concentrate iodine and use it to make thyroid hormone outside the thyroid? Nope. Ovaries. The ovary has the ability to concentrate iodine and to make thyroid hormone from, those, from that gland. So if you see a patient with hyperthyroidism, you are obligated to do a radioactive study on them and check 
the ovaries because they may have a hot thyroid nodule inside the ovary causing the th hyperthyroidism. Now, it's interesting that the ovaries make a thyroid hormone called thyroid T2. T2 is, uh, can be used by the body to make T3 or T4. And of it, it's interesting that so many women start gaining weight when their ovaries are starting to fail. And when they're starting to fail, it's because of the decrease in T2 production. Guess what? You can buy T2 over the counter, non-prescription. And one of the vendors over here has T2 and some of their formulas that you can get, and you don't have to be on, you know, get it by prescription. There are other tissues that absorb large amounts of iodine, the breast tissue, the salivary glands. What happens to the salivary glands if you don't have enough iodine? You can't make saliva. So your eyes go dry, your, your uh, mouth goes dry, lack of iodine. Pancreas, uh, cerebrospinal fluid, the brain tissue, the stomach, the skin, lack of more glands, lack of iodine to the skin, what do you get? Dry skin, skin that can't sweat. So this, you get out there and you work in the garden and it's a hot day, you should sweat all over the body. But I've got patients who just get red and hot, but they don't sweat. Decreased sweating is due to lack of iodine. And when you start these people on iodine, within three or four weeks, they start sweating pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, iodine inside the cerebrospinal fluid. What does iodine do to the brain? Makes the brain more mentally alert which is why you never, never, never give iodine to somebody just before they go to sleep. Because you'll wake up the brain and the brain will become very active. Iodine during pregnancy. A baby, a fetus inside the uterus and you give the mother iodine. Usually uh, we give iodine, enough iodine as if the mother were a Japanese woman. How much iodine does a Japanese woman eat on a daily basis? 13.8 milligrams of iodine per day in Japan. You give that much iodine to a pregnant woman and iodine to the baby is like caffeine to us. Caffeine makes you very mentally alert, gives you tachycardia, gives you all sorts of problems. But newborn, you know, fetuses inside the uterus, you give them 12.5 milligrams of iodine a day. The baby is very hyperactive. It's moving around. It's as if the mother just took 10 cups of coffee. You don't take iodine that day. The baby is nice and quiet, and it doesn't move very much. But you give the mother iodine, and the baby just starts stirring around a lot. It's as if the baby becomes very mentally alert while it's inside the uterus. It's very interesting, but iodine to the brain is very stimulating to the tissue. Now, we've learned about the sodium iodide symporter. The symporter is how you pump iodine into the tissues. Again, there are two types of iodine. What are they? There's iodine and there's iodide. What's the difference between the two? What's iodide? It's the salt of iodine. Now, iodine will literally diffuse into a cell. So it diffuses in, whereas iodide needs to be transported in. So this is the transport mechanism. It's called the sodium iodide symporter. It's a transport mechanism. You will find babies that are born hypothyroid. And hypothyroid babies usually have a symporter defect. And many of you who, well, many women will develop breast cancer. And breast cancer is seen in a defective sodium iodide symporter. We can do testing for the symporter and we can check and see if it's okay or not. And we do have ways to fix these symporters now. Of interest is, is that the symporter uh, 
is fixable. And it's even in children with hypothyroidism, you can turn them euthyroid by fixing the symphoter, giving them iodine, and their thyroid starts making thyroid hormone. 